so the structure in this uh, lesson we will learn the structure of the factor ring r over i okay r over i but whenever i is prime or maximal ideal so what is a prime and what is a maximal ideal let's start with defi defining the prime ideal so an ideal p now we want p not to equal the whole uh, ring r in a commutative ring r so the prime ideal is defined in not in any ring but in commutative rings so first thing we said it it is does not equal the whole ring r and in a commutative ring r then we say it is prime if okay if whenever b times c belongs to that ideal then either then either b or c is in the ideal okay to make this clear let me present this definition this way it is a simple definition but students may not uh, understand it uh, correctly so let me present it using this graph now assume this is the ideal P inside the ring R now if we want to assume that this ideal P is prime ideal that means we do not allow do not allow the following thing to happen which is if we have two elements outside the ideal then we think to make operation the multiplication here if we think to make the multiplication we will not allow the result of the multiplication we will not allow that multiplication to be in the ideal p this is not allowed maybe this is a better way to explain the meaning of prime ideal so the prime ideal does not allow the product of two elements from outside it does not allow their product to live inside it which means the cases where the product of two elements lives inside the ideal p is that one of them was already in p either a either b would they have them here b or c okay sorry i i used so let me go back to match notation i will say this is b a instead of c and this is a again okay so the prime ideal says if we got a product of two elements a and b to belong to the ideal p then one of them either a or b was already in the ideal p maybe both of them a and b were already in the ideal that's fine okay now maybe this example will make it more clear the ideal p generated by six is not a prime in six and this is why since two times three belongs to p but none of these two elements two or three is in p but two does not belong to p and three does not belong to p so the product of two elements from outside the ideal their product came out to be inside the ideal then that ideal is not prime okay now in general here the principal ideal generated by p is a prime in z whenever p is prime let's prove that assume uh, 
let's give the name capital P to be the ideal generated by P which is the same as these parentheses here okay now let a B be integers such that their product belongs to the ideal P okay now remember a and B are integers then that means a times B belongs to the principal ideal generated by small p but we know that uh, the principal ideal generated by an element consists of all multiples of that element which is a small p here so a b is a multiple of p small p for some element from the ring which is here the integers okay that means this means p divides a times b okay but b is a prime and we know that once we have a prime integer that divides the product of two integers then that prime must either divide the first one or the second one and uh, we assume to know this already then either I believe uh, we, we have used it for before either B divides A or P divides B and so and this gives actually if this happened that means A belongs to the ideal generated by P and if this happens then it means B belongs to the ideal generated by P so we have that and uh, this gives a belongs to okay we are done actually but I'll write it one more okay so what we have at the beginning that a times B belongs to the ideal P and we concluded either a belongs to P or B belongs to P and therefore uh, this ideal generated by a prime integer is always a prime ideal and actually you can uh, in, uh, in general you see about this example we can generalize it uh, you know that all ideals of Z uh, are principles so every ideal of Z is generated by some integer so uh, we will see the ideal which is generated by n and z is prime ideal if and only if the generator here is a prime integer if and only if in uh, this we have proved uh, this direction this direction has already been proved the ideal is a prime if the, the generator is a prime and uh, to prove the other direction I will leave it to you actually do it by contrapositive assume the number n the integer n is not a prime and show the ideal generated by n is not a prime ideal okay so we got the definition of uh, prime ideal let us see more examples before we go to a theorem okay so the zero ideal in any integral domain is a prime ideal so this is a uh, very natural uh, uh, how to prove that the zero ideal uh, is a prime ideal so assume we multiply two elements and that belongs to the ideal generated by the zero of the domain the zero of R and these two elements are coming from the ring R the domain the integral domain remember integral domain says 
it's a commutative ring with identity that has no zero divisors okay now since a times b belongs to the zero id which consists only of zero that means a times b equals zero but we are in an integral domain but r is an integral domain thus and the multiplication of two elements is zero and we have no zero divisors then thus either a is zero or b is zero and this gives either a belongs to the zero ideal if we want want to write it uh, with a complete writing or or b belongs to the zero ideal so this is what we started with uh, multiplication two elements belong to the zero ideal then one of these elements must belong to the zero ideal which proves that the zero ideal in the integral domain is a prime ideal okay this happens only in integral domain if we choose a ring which is not integral domain then the zero ideal is not uh, a prime ideal and why is that let's see an another example uh, see the zero ideal in here is is not is not a prime ideal in z6 for instance why since 2 times 3 will give will belong let's say will belong to the zero but neither one of them none of them belongs to the zero ideal so so we got a product of two elements belongs to the zero ideal but none of them is there so the zero ideal in z6 is not a prime ideal so the zero ideal is a prime ideal if and only if we are in an integral domain okay let's see uh, one more example of uh, two more examples actually of prime ideals we have seen such an ideal before let i be the ideal of all polynomials with even constant term even constant term in z of x so uh, our ring here r is z of x which means all polynomials whose coefficients are the integers from the integers and now if we collect all polynomials whose constant term is even then we have shown previously that uh, this is an ideal and it does not equal the whole ring remember in the definition of a prime ideal we required the ideal not to equal the whole ring okay now we want to show that uh, this ideal is prime ideal actually the ideal that consists of all polynomials with even constant term is a prime ideal and how we do it we choose arbitrary uh, elements two arbitrary elements from the ring r which is the ring of polynomials over z and we assume that their multiplication belongs to i so uh, these are two arbitrary elements from z of x we can represent any two arbitrary elements this way now we assume their multiplication belongs to i which means that the constant term of their multiplication is even right so how to get the constant term of their multiplication it is the constant of the first polynomial times the constant of the second polynomial and so we get a0 times b0 
is even okay now these are two integers a0 and b0 and their multiplication is even then one of them must be even right if you have two integers and you multiply them together then and you get even then one of them must be even right because we know that even times even is even even times odd is even odd times even is even but odd times odd is odd is not even this is the only case now we must conclude that either a0 is even or b0 is even but in this case in the first case we get the constant term of f of x is even and that means f of x belongs to the ideal i or if p0 is even then uh, this is g of x that means g of x belongs to the ideal i so here we got it we assume the multiplication of these two polynomials belongs to i and then we showed one of them uh, this first one or second one belongs to i both of them might belong to i that's that's okay okay and therefore uh, this gives i is a prime ideal And the ring of polynomials over the integers uh, that's how we say it and the ring of polynomials over the integers okay one more example the principal ideal generated by x in the ring z of x is a prime how do we know that watch out for the quotient ring and we have computed actually this caution ring is isomorphic uh, to z have we proved that before this uh, caution ring is isomorphic to z and i think uh, we proved it using a map yes i remember now we proved it use we used a map f from the ring of polynomials over z to z and uh, this f defined by it takes uh, p of x a polynomial it takes it to its image over the zero okay and this is a uh, surjective homomorphism actually is a surjective ring homomorphism and then uh, with kernel and we showed that kernel of f was all the polynomials with no constant term every polynomial that you substitute zero inside of x in place of x and then you get the result to be zero after this substitution that polynomial originally uh, consists uh, the terms in that polynomial all of them has an x right Div divisible by x and we talked about it actually and the kernel now is uh, the ideal generated by x this is what we want to say okay and uh, by the first isomorphism theorem we have seen that the domain quotient by the kernel is isomorphic to the image which is z okay so what i have written in blue is to recall why these are isomorphic good okay now you know that z is an integral domain right and therefore this quotient ring must be an integral domain because it is isomorphic to z and z is an integral domain so the isomorphic image of it must be integral domain but not a field okay now since this an integral domain we will conclude actually this ideal is a prime ideal see now 
how we concluded this ideal is a prime ideal we did not use the definition as we have done with the examples that we have just seen but we use something which says that if the quotient ring r over an ideal i comes out to be integral domain then that ideal i is a prime ideal and how do we know that actually we are using this theorem here this is what we are gonna learn now here we go a very important theorem in fact we start with ideal p in a commutative ring with identity r now what we say if we have p to be prime ideal then we will conclude that r over b is integral domain r over p the quotient ring and the opposite if r over b is an integral domain then we will say and we will prove then the ideal p is a prime ideal this is the one this is the direction we have just used in the example above so let us prove this theorem let us prove that direction assume p is a prime ideal in a commutative ring R with identity we want to prove now want that the quotient ring is an integral integral domain which means it has no zero divisors and it is commutative ring with identity okay we in, in here it is uh, r over p because we are denoting the ideal by letter p this is r over over p okay now remember what integral domain means it means a commutative ring with identity that has no zero divisors right okay but now uh, by a previous theorem we know that r over p is commutative with identity right when we learned about the quotient ring we said if the ring is commutative then its quotient ring over any ideal is also commutative when the ring has a unity and identity and if we, if we assume the identity is if we are denoted 1 over 1 sub r then the identity we are talking about here the identity of this factor or quotient ring is the cosset represented by the identity of r correct okay and also let me write it somewhere uh, we know that let me write it in here the zero of the quotient ring is represented by the is, is the cosset represented by the zero of r so actually uh, we will need um, these two things okay now we wanted to prove that this ring is integral domain so we have done uh, show that it is commutative with identity now it remains to show that it has no zero divisors so let me write that in green 
now want to show that R over B has no zero divisors okay so how we show that uh, a ring has no zero divisors we assume that there are two elements from inside that ring and multiply them we assume the multiplication equals to zero and then we show that one of these elements was already zero so let's do it now assume let's take two elements from this quotient ring the, uh, these two elements uh, must be cosets of, of p so let's write them this way a plus p uh, and b plus p are two elements from the factor or the quotient ring uh, assume these two elements are such that their multiplication is zero and we said above there the zero is the zero of the quotient ring is zero plus p okay but we know that this multiplication equals a times p plus p right equals so this multiplication here this is what I wanted to see equals this so this equals 0 plus P okay now we have a cosset it is it is the same cosset now this cosset here we are saying equals to this cosset and what does that mean when we have two cossets that are equal that means the difference between their representatives must belong to the ideal right and therefore this gives us a b minus zero belongs to b we might keep writing this is the zero of r and this gives that a times b belongs to the ideal p but P, the ideal P is prime so either A belongs to P or B belongs to P okay but what does this give us in terms of cosets hence either a belongs to B that means the cosset represented by A is the same as the cosset represented by 0 okay or and same thing here B belongs to P that means the cosset represented by B is the same as the cosset represented by 0 and now see what we got so uh, let me write it in here so that means a plus P equals the zero of the quotient ring or B plus P equals the zero of the quotient ring so what we got in here we assume that the multiplication of two cosset is zero and we concluded that one of them at least must be zero okay so we have no zero divisors we cannot multiply two cosets none of them is zero and then we get zero we cannot do so and then uh, we are done and by by doing so we have proved that r over p has no zero divisors and we are done that means r over b is an integral domain okay let's prove the opposite assume r over b is an integral domain and we want to show that p is prime
assume r over p is an integral domain now we want to show that p is a prime ideal okay now remember prime ideal uh, means uh, first of thing uh, it does not equal the whole rank right and then the property a times b belongs to p then either p or a or b belongs to p okay so first let's show that uh, P is a prime ideal. Uh, first, let's show that P does not equal the whole ring. Okay, does not equal R. Now, by definition, if you remember, since R over P is an integral domain, then the identity and the zero are different. Then the identity, the identity of this ring is the cost to present it by the identity does not equal the cost to present it by zero right again what i'm saying in here this is the identity of r over p and this is is the zero of r over p and we are saying they are not equal because r is integral domain remember the definition of an integral domain is commutative ring with identity that has no zero divisors but we will um, assume that uh, the, the zero does not equal the identity you go back to the definition and and make sure this is the way okay now since these two these two cosets are not equal that means one minus zero there the the difference between the representative does not equal to p and that means the one is the identity of R in here does not belong to P okay and this is enough to say that uh, R does not belong to P because the identity lives in R but does not lives in P so P is not the whole rank R so we are done with that now let's prove the property which says that uh, let uh, we will choose two elements let a b belongs to the ring b such that their multiplication belongs to the ideal and now what we want to finish the proof want either a belongs to the ideal p or b belongs to the ideal b this is what we want to do and remember we have information that r over p is integral domain which means multiplication of elements in there non-zero elements will never be zero but the elements in there are cosets so we cannot multiply two non-zero cosets and get the zero cosets we cannot do so and we will benefit from that information okay now since a times b belongs to p uh, now we want to show uh, okay, B is a prime ideal okay that means okay let me write that as A times B belongs to P then that means um, A times B plus P is the zero cosset right because we know that uh, the cosset represented by any elements from the ideal is the same as the ideal itself or the zero cosset itself or we we are using actually uh, what i'm what i'm keep writing here we are using this repeatedly so let me emphasize it that in general for for any ideal ideal in r we know that uh, R plus I say equals S plus I where R and S elements from the ring this is equivalent for saying that R minus S belongs to I 
good so once we have now once we have r plus i equals 0 plus i that means r minus 0 belongs to i and that means r belongs to i okay now if we replace if we replace r with a b okay now what we get in here we get a b belongs to i so having a b belongs to i means that the ideal represented by a b is the same as the ideal represented by zero okay so let me go back to the proof and keep going now this is again what i'm saying since Since A, B belongs to the ideal, then they give the same cosset as the zero does, okay? But we know that by multiplication of cossets, we know that this equality happened, right? And so that equals zero plus p and this is supposed to be p not r here okay okay good so what we got so far so far we got multiplying this cosset times this cosset give us zero oh interesting but this is the zero of the of the quotient train but we are saying here this quotient ring is integral domain, so we cannot have zero divisors. So this cosset will act as zero divisors. And we cannot allow this to happen. So we will force, so we must have one of them at least to be zero. We must have either A plus B is the zero cosset or b plus p is the zero cosset and in this case that means a belongs to p and in this case b belongs to p and then we are done this is what we wanted to show and it is in here a belongs to b or b belongs to b and therefore we got that p is a prime ideal So again, remember that. So let me rewrite it here. Uh, this theorem is very helpful. Uh, theorem, I've just write it this way. R is commutative ring with identity. Then R is prime, sorry. Uh, P is prime ideal. if and only if r over p is an integral domain this is a very important theorem now we define uh, a maximal ideal okay so an ideal will be called maximal first of thing it does not equal the whole r okay so an ideal M in the ring R is called maximal. This is not maximum, it is maximal. Maximal. If whenever J is an ideal that is between M and J, uh, M and R, then we must have that either M equals J or M equals R. Okay. Now we are talking about maximal and not maximum. Well, maximal does not mean the greatest ideal in the ring. No, it does not mean that. Maximal means no other ideal can contain it except the whole ring. And here we go, let us demonstrate it in some figure to understand it, to have a good picture in mind what maximal ideal means. So this is the whole ring M. 
r sorry and we assume there is an ideal m that we claim to be maximal a, a, a maximal ideal so I am saying a maximal ideal because there might be more than one maximal ideal actually there are uh, rings that has infinitely many maximal ideals and we will see that now if I assume M is maximal then I cannot allow other ideal to contain it for instance I cannot there is no other ideal which is between M and G and and R so the definition it says G I cannot allow this to happen I cannot allow ideals to contain M except R so no ideal can contain M no proper ideal when I say a proper ideal it means an ideal which is strictly contained in the ring when I say a proper ideal it means an ideal which is not equal to the ring not the whole ring so I'm saying here if I say M is a maximal ideal then this means there is no ideal that contain it okay so we will not allow this to happen we will not allow such a j to exist because we are saying m is the maximal ideal and again saying m is a maximal ideal does not necessarily mean it contains all other ideals no it might not contain other ideals we might have some ideal which does not contain m okay and it is not contained in N. I can allow J to be such a thing, or let me call it I. It does not contain M. Okay, and M is not containing it. Okay, and still M is called maximal. Okay, so let's see example for maximal ideals. If we choose R to be the ring Z, then M equals 2Z which we mean generated by 2 is a maximal ideal in Z is a maximal ideal no other ideal contain it we know that all ideals of Z are of that form n times Z which is generated by n so if any ideal wants to contain if if let's say if n if the ideal generated by 2 is contained by some n then that would mean 2 uh, is belong to that ideal and that means n divides 2 and that means n equals plus or negative 1 but plus or negative 1 generates the whole ring so see what happened in here I assumed uh, n contains 2 and I assumed it does not equal it so let me write that explicitly it does not equal 2 but it contained the ID it does not equal the ID generated by 2 it does not equal the ID generated by 2 but it contains the ID generated by 2 and I, I then proved it is the whole ring actually how to prove M is a maximal ideal we will do so we will assume there is an ideal okay there is an ideal G which is not equals to M but that ideal actually must then forced to equal R which means I assume there is an ideal that contains M but I prove this cannot happen because uh, this cannot happen by showing that uh, J equals R this cannot happen unless the other the bigger ideal is the whole ring okay and now similarly here we can prove also the ideal generated by 3 is a maximal ideal in Z 
okay? But idea generated by four is not is not a maximal uh, I, not a maximal ideal in Z and why this is this happens since the idea generated by four is contained in the idea generated by two and this does not equal the whole ring okay now you can see here in general and I will let you prove it in general ideals that are maximum in the N and in Z ideal of that form is uh, a maximal ideal in Z if and only if N is prime or irreducible reducible integer and I will let you to uh, go and prove it and uh, in fact to prove such a thing we can use this theorem okay now this theorem is analog to the one we have just approved and in fact this theorem which much is much more important now in this theorem says uh, this theorem says if we have an ideal M in a commutative ring with identity so we have we are assuming R is commutative ring and it has identity okay and we are assuming we have M now this says if M is maximal ideal then R over M is a field this is very important in algebra and it has so many applications okay and also the opposite if we found that R over M this quotient ring came out to be a field then the ideal M we used to make that quotient ring is maximal ideal okay and we will prove this and again before we prove it uh, we will use maybe okay let's see uh, let me write in here again uh, we will have a plus m equals b plus m uh, th this is equivalent for saying that a minus b yes we will need that belongs to m okay uh, and also a plus m equals 0 plus m applying the above line that means a belongs to m and maybe uh, we will uh, say that uh, okay if we have any okay let me use x here plus m if that equals the cosset represented by m then that means x minus 1 belongs to m right okay so we will use all of these maybe or some of them and let's go back to the theorem and prove it okay So proof. We will prove this direction, which means we assume M is a maximal ideal. M is a maximal ideal. In R. What do you want to prove? Want R over M is a field. Okay? Which means a commutative ring with identity that has no, uh, sorry, commutative ring with identity in which every non zero element is a unit. Now, we know already by a previous theorem we have that R over M is commutative 
with identity commutative with identity and the identity here actually the identity of that ring uh, as usual is the cosset represented by the identity of the ring R okay so this quotient ring is commutative with identity so it is left to show that uh, every non-zero element in there ha uh, uh, has an inverse so let's, let us choose uh, a non-zero element let uh, a belongs to r over m b with uh, i want now to say it is not a non-zero element which means it is not it is not the zero cosset or the cosset representative by zero and that means uh, that is uh, okay that is that means a does not belong to M as we have just said okay so this is non-zero element what we want to show that want to show that a plus M this cosset has a multiplicative inverse in R over M that means we want to find some cosset that is want to find some cosset which I call want to find B plus M in that quotient ring such that a plus m this cosset times b plus m equals the identity of that ring but what is the identity of that ring it is this cosset so this is what we want to do and remember that we have the very uh, helpful uh, assumption hypothesis which says m is maximal we want to show that okay now we have the following m is maximal and also we have that a does not belong to m okay so I want to use this infor to information how I do that consider the set which I will call J that is formed the following way M plus R times A where so A is fixed right so A is a fixed element it is the one we have here it is the one we have already chose at the beginning in here so A is a fixed element now I want to take all the possible combination of that form okay where M is any element from the ideal arbitrary element from the ideal and R is arbitrary element from the ring R okay so choose this set now I will leave it as exercise for you to show that J is an ideal in R okay J is an ideal in R now notice that M is contained and does not equal 
g and why is that since if we choose r equals 0 where r equals 0 in here then we will have all elements m this is arbitrary element of m then we will have m belongs to that set for all elements in the ideal okay so m is contained in g now i want to show that uh, m does not equal j or we may assume that uh, m does not uh, equal uh, j how okay how we show that m does not equal j by the following also note that a belongs to j right how can we do this we can choose by choosing m equals 0 above here and r equals the identity of the ring because r is any element in the ring so what we got now a belongs to j but a does not belong to m so j strictly contains m okay therefore j strictly contains m good but m is maximal ideal but m is a maximal ideal and therefore j will be forced to equal the whole ring but m is a maximal ideal therefore we must have that j equals the whole ring good thus the identity of r must belong to j because j equals the whole ring and the identity exists in r because we said r is commutative with the identity then that identity must belong to j but remember here all elements of j are of that form you see of this form so the identity must be of that form therefore So the identity must be obtained in the one that I highlighted with yellow which means for some choices of m small m and r we must get the identity so there exist there exist small m in the ideal and b in the ring so this will take the place of R such that this identity equals small m plus b times a. Good. Now what happened here? This is the identity of R. What happens here? So b times a equals. So let me write it this way. Sorry so one the identity minus ba equals m right 
but this belongs to the ideal M now what we got in here an element minus another element belongs to M and therefore these two elements will give us the same cosset right and that means the identity cosset in here equals the product of this cosset b plus m times this cosset and we are done that is b plus m is the multiplicative inverse of a plus m as we have just promised to show right if you go back here this is what we wanted to show we chose an element in this ring r over m which is not zero and we showed it has a multiplicative inverse the one we promised to show here and then we are done with that direction we assumed m is maximal and prove that r over m is a field so let's go and uh, prove the opposite so let's, pr let's prove now the other direction which says that uh, if r over m is a field then then m is a maximal ideal so let's prove the opposite direction assume r over m is a field and now okay let's split this and we want to show that uh, let's write what we want in here want to show that M is a maximal ideal and to show it's a maximal ideal uh, we must show it does not equal the whole ring but remember that in the definition of the field is commutative ring with identity uh, every element has an inverse but also that the identity does not equal the zero now therefore this is what I want to write the identity of that ring does not equal this is this is by the definition of a field does not equal the zero but that means the identity uh, of this ring is the cosset represented by the identity we are saying it does not equal the zero of that ring is the cosset represented by zero and since they are not equal that means the identity does not belong to m and now that means m does not equal the whole ring so good to prove an ideal is maximal we must show it does not equal the whole ring now uh, how we prove an ideal is maximal uh, we assume there is an ideal which is between M and R and then we sh we will show that it is either M or it is either R so let me write that assume G is an ideal in R such that M is between j and r okay now want either m j equals m or j equals r okay this is what we want to show how you show in general uh, uh, a statement a or a statement b assume that one of them is not satisfied and then you will get some information out of that and use that information to prove the other one must be satisfied 
So okay, how we do it? Assume, assume m does not equal j. This is what I'm saying. Now want to show that r equal j. And how we do it? We will do this by showing actually the identity of R belongs to G. If I can do that, then that means G equals R. Why? Because if the identity is in the ring, in, in the ideal G, and G is an ideal, then we will have that R times any element in G must belong to G, and this is for all elements in the rank right this is the definition of the ideal of the ideal take an element from that ideal and multiply it by any element in the rank the result must be absorbed in the ideal so uh, this is in the ideal and this is any ring but the result is r so that means r belong to g for any rank ideal uh, element in the rank and indeed this will give us that R is contained in J, but J is contained in R, then boom, that. So if we show this, then we are done. Then M is maximum. Then there is no ideal that contains M, except R itself. Okay? So this is what we want. And remember, we must benefit from the fact that R over M is a field, which means every non-zero element in there has a multiplicative inverse. So let's, let us do it. Uh, since m does not belong, uh, sorry, uh, since m does not equal j, then there must be an element, and we are saying actually in here, m is strictly in j, then there is an element that belongs to G but does not belong to M. I will write it that way, okay? So uh, let me emphasize that that is E does not belong to, sorry, to M. E does not belong to M. That means the cosset represented by A is not equal or does not equal the cos it's represented by zero, right? Okay, good. So A plus M is a non-zero element in R over M. I want to emphasize that A plus M does not equal the zero of R over M. Uh, so A plus M must have a multiplicative multiplicative inverse multiplicative inverse in R over M. Correct? Why? Because, uh, let me emphasize that, this is and uh, a comma in here, completing the sentence. This is because R over M is a field. Okay, so this is what we will benefit from. So we are saying there is a multiplicative inverse and I may say uh, let B plus M be that multiplicative inverse. I can write it this way, be that multiplicative inverse. Or let me say be the multiplicative inverse of A plus M in this ring. Okay, that means B plus M, this is the multiplicative inverse, must equal the identity 
of R over M. But what is the identity? It is this cosset. Okay? Then let's multiply them. B times E Okay, this is this side equals that equals good and that means so we we are almost there so these two cosets are equal thus their difference must be equal belongs to M good Okay, their difference belongs to M, but M is contained in J, so B A minus the identity must equal some small J for some J belongs to the capital J, correct? Now let us write the identity. then rewrite this as b a minus g and look what happened but b times a must belong to capital g why because we assume that small a belongs to g remember and G is an ideal. What does that mean? B and the, at the beginning in here I should write B is any element in R, right? But A belongs to J. So uh, multiplying an element from inside an ideal J by any element from the R, the multiplication will be absorbed inside the ideal, which is J. So b times a is in j now notice what happened this is in j and this is small element small g is in j so we have two elements that are in the ideal so the so their subtraction must be in the ideal also therefore b a minus g belongs to the ideal j but that equals the identity this is what we wanted hence the identity of the ring belongs to j and as we have explained before that implies j equals the whole ring so we assumed j is an ideal that strictly contains m and then we proved that ideal is the whole ring so we cannot have ideals between m and the whole ring R, we cannot, and therefore M is a maximal ideal in R. Okay. Example. We have seen this ideal again and again. Let I be the ideal of all polynomials with even constant terms in Z. Then it is maximal. Why it is maximal? Because we have seen that this quotient ring, it consists of two cosets. Remember that we have seen this before. It consists of the zero coset and the coset represented by one and it is a group of two elements or a ring of two elements this is isomorphic to z2 but this is a field so good so the quotient ring is a field that means i must be maximal okay so we concluded the ideal i is maximal without using the definition but we used the theorem okay so last thing now this corollary if we have commutative ring with identity then it says that every maximal ideal is prime ideal is prime ideal. so let me write it in here 
that says uh, maximal ideals this is what we are saying if you have an ideal in hand which came out to be maximal then necessarily this prime ideal but not the opposite the opposite is not correct uh, to prove this theorem uh, let I be a maximal ideal in R which is by the theorem commutative ring with identity let me write in this way identity then R over I is a field by the above theorem right but we know every field is integral domain but not the opposite hence hence R over I is an integral domain and then by the the theorem the one we proved before the last one the quotient ring over an ideal is the integral domain then that ideal is a prime ideal so we started with the maximal ideal i is maximal ideal and then we ended with i is a prime ideal and this is the end of uh, this lecture